Healthcare workers touted as the heroes of the pandemic have not just taken a mental beating, but a physical one. How often it happens and the intensity of the abuse may shock you. Yeah, Dini, court documents show nurses punched, kicked, and getting their hair ripped out. KSL investigators have spent months now looking for data, talking with hospitals and healthcare workers to find out what is happening in Utah hospitals. It is tough to watch. A sudden, unprovoked punch, followed by attacks on two nurses and a security guard who was punched 12 times. It happened at a Provo hospital in 2020, an attack that sent three people to the ER. I was punched in the chest by a patient. Assaults on healthcare workers are not new. So I got slapped in the face, punched in the stomach. But the reality is, over the past couple of years, it has gotten worse. I've been punched, hit, none of that stuff that I sign up for. And to those who say it's just all part of the job, they have a message. It's not part of the job. Take a look at these numbers from the Utah Hospital Association showing reported workforce violence in Utah's four major health care systems. In total, nearly 22,000 reports of physical or verbal abuse in three years with a 13% jump since the beginning of the pandemic. The KSL investigators spoke with dozens of healthcare workers, professionals being screamed at, spit on, punched, and worse. But none were willing to go on camera for this story, all fearful of losing their jobs. Except for Stephanie Spar. I've been a nurse for 18 years. Who has seen her share of abuse. It's mainly verbal. I was called a stupid And says the pandemic has taken things to a new level. Been called a liar to me it happens about once a week in the hospital it happens more stephanie um, says she experienced physical violence several years ago pre-pandemic while working at an ogden hospital a colleague was attacked by a patient's wife and she tried to help that colleague escape we all fell back and i hurt my knee and my co-worker had some scratches on her arms and so and she was out of control. She was out of control. Stephanie says security removed the woman from the hospital, and that was it. But as far as repercussions for this woman, none. There is nothing. None. Why? That's a good question. I don't I don't know why. Now Utah does have a law designed to protect hospital workers. But just how often are their abusers being prosecuted under that law? KSL investigators dug through court records and prosecution. Well, it's rare. Just 142 criminal cases filed between the start of the pandemic and November 2021. Less than 1% of reported verbal and physical assaults. And Dr. Liz Close with the Utah Nurses Association says the actual number of abusive incidents is likely higher. Frequently, if they are hit or harmed, they don't report it. She says many nurses don't feel like they should report abuse. Whether it's a patient experiencing a severe mental issue or under the influence, even those just having a bad day, nurses do not want to make it worse. Nurses are extremely empathetic and do not have the ability to simply abandon their patients. A mix of misinformation, politics, and growing mental health strains seem to be contributing to increased abuse. But getting at the heart of why and preventing attacks has some roadblocks. With the reporting not being consistent, that's a problem. That includes how hospitals track those assaults. Dr. Close says creating a uniform requirement would help out. It's been proposed nationally through the Workplace Violence Prevention for Healthcare and Social Service Workers Act, supported by Utah Nurses Association. Healthcare organizations have to develop plans for how they address the workplace violence and prevent it. But when the bill came up for a vote in April of 2021, all four Utah congressmen voted against it. When we asked why, two lawmakers responded, both of them saying that the bill was, quote, rushed and imposes overly prescriptive mandates. Could the whole process be improved? Uh, that's likely yes. But Dave Gessel of the Utah Hospital, Hospital Association told us it wasn't until we started asking questions that they gathered data on just how often these assaults are happening in Utah hospitals. But also says more federal regulation isn't going to help. But there's a ton on the federal side, so a lot of times hospitals just feel like we can't even hardly do what we are requested to do now. That's why it's so important for us to be addressing it now. If that does not work, Utah Representative Robert Spenlove hopes this will. He's trying to expand protections for health care workers to clinics and doctor's offices. It's a class A misdemeanor that can uh, result in up to a year in jail. Outside of getting the law involved, UHA says hospitals are taking steps to protect their workers and their patients. 
Many have their own security and response teams to handle unruly patients. I think there's a lot of training going on, both in de-escalation, but also what to do if you're having one of these incidents. And he has this message for abusers. This should be a place of healing and health and help us do that by being on your normal civilized behavior. Be patient with us. We're doing the best we can with what we have. Svenlund's bill is currently under consideration in the Utah Senate. It would include a sunset on those extra protections there of five years from now. Some hospitals may be prosecuting more often, though, but under different laws like simple assault. We do have a lot more information and data on this matter. Go to our website, ksltv.com.